a little bit. Okay, so I looked at uh, a couple of different kinds of hive scales. I originally looked at the load cell scales, but they were too expensive. Um, I looked at a lot of sort of the half lift mechanisms uh, where you sort of pick up half the hive. And then I kind of made, uh, with my advisor, sort of invented another kind. Don't quite recommend for safety reasons, I'll explain why, but it was, it was pretty cool. It was very cool. Um, so if you look at a, a normal load, like four load cell uh, hive, there's not a lot of inaccuracy in that. Uh, sort of the design, it's very robust uh, to sort of inclination. Um, the mechanism is usually good, but there's one problem which is drift. Um, so a lot of people don't think about this. They say, oh, I have continuous data, everything's perfect. Um, but you're actually not accounting for variations in temperature and drift over time. Uh, so as a researcher, I thought that was potentially important. Um, half lift mechanisms, though, suffer from a lot of inaccuracy in the way that they're done. Um, and I have a lot of variables. You have the inclination of the ground that it's very sensitive to. You have where do you place shims if you're trying to lift on one side. Um, so if you're, if you're buying something that does one of these things, I highly recommend measuring on one side of your high, like the left, coming around to the right and taking another measurement and averaging them. Um, if you lift from the back only, just with the errors, not including the actual device and how it's measuring, uh, you could have a spread of like 12 to negative 18% error just from different parameters of is the bee's mass, center mass off center, where's your shim and other things. Um, whereas if you lift from both sides, it's under 5% error, which is at least a little bit better. Um, I looked at a couple of interesting designs. One of them uh, was, um, uh, was the one that you see here. It was essentially a little torque wrench that has uh, a little bracket. And you slide it under your hive and you try to twist, and it, it lifts up your hive just a little bit and you try to measure it. Uh, the person hadn't done much of a, what's called a free body diagram, which is a drawing of your forces. This suffers from a lot of friction. And so friction alone can have, like, it can augment the measurement by as much as like 8%. Uh, which is really not good. Um, so if you're going and trying to buy a weight scale, don't really recommend this one. Um, there was a tutorial online for a design that looked uh, like the following. It has a little luggage scale off to the right, has a little pulley with a string, and it has a little lever that it tries to pick up. This is a good design, um, but I have some improvements to it. Um, and again, you want to measure from your left and your right and you take an average. Um, I could talk a little bit about sort of design improvements and and the, the mechanisms and analysis that go into this, but it actually it can reduce the air down to, I believe, under 5% and get it pretty consistent, which is good. Uh, the idea that I had to make things a little bit faster uh, and, and also be accurate um, was this design as follows. What happens is you have a clamp. It kind of tries to keep the boxes together because sometimes they like to separate. Um, and you can have a little device that you pull over to the right, you switch around, you pull over to the left, and you use what's called a uh, sort of uh, you have the equilibrium with torque, and you can actually get a pretty good estimate of what your, uh, the weight of your hive is. And so that's a pretty cool mechanism that I don't think people have done before. You need to have special hive stands that aren't going to tip over, uh, and you, you want to make sure that the bees have really propolized boxes when you do it. Um, <laughs> we didn't have any problems, I just want to put a disclaimer. Um, but you can actually see some of, some of the different designs. Uh, your normal four frame uh, well, for load cell, can drift probably about two percent is a good estimate. Uh, we had a, somebody come in to talk about their uh, little hive scale that only measured on one side. That's actually very not very robust to like where you put it. It's very sensitive to the inclination of your hive. If you moved it too far or too close, did the bees put their honey in the front or the back? Um, so actually, uh, you can have as much as negative fifteen percent air with that. But it's not going to change very quickly over time. So you can see lovely cute graphs online. Just be skeptical if you're a researcher. Um, Torque wrench and bracket, again, like almost 20% error. It's pretty bad. The leverage pool, I have sort of negative 10 to plus 17. But if you optimize it like I did, and you can read about it in my thesis, uh, you can get negative 5 to plus 2% error, which is pretty good. Um, so pretty interesting. The portable uh, scale is one where you take a bathroom scale and you put little edges on it. And you go and you pick up your pick up your scale, or you pick up your hive. Um, there's a couple mechanisms to do that. Uh, the only problem is you got to be really careful that your hive doesn't fall off your weight scale, because uh, that could be really bad. I've seen some really bad designs online of how to do it. But the nice thing is that it recalibrates when you set your hive down, and then you pick it up, and that's what gets it. It's really good accuracy. So.